Hello fellow heroes and welcome back to an Arctastic Titan build for those grenade lovers out there. We have a simple but very powerful grenade build that can do a lot of damage within a short time frame and even take on a boss without ever needing to use a weapon for them. And I believe a lot of people have been picking up on it and being surprised as to how generally powerful it really is. Although a lot of people are using stored grenades for their short duration, I'm going to be using pulse grenades instead as they hit just as hard as them but offer something more than what storm grenades do offer. For an Arc 3.0 build, this Arc Titan is nuts and I can see it being really useful in certain endgame content when the time comes. So get your best armamentarian out and spit shine that Arc weapon of yours as you're going to need it where we are going. But you know what else should have an Arctastic day? You guys of course. So if you enjoy the content then please leave a like, a sub and turn on your notification for more content like this in the future as it would really help me out. So to start, we'll be using Thunder Crash and the newly updated arc ability to get as much leverage as possible when using our grenades at its fullest. The idea of the build is to use your grenades as a primary weapon and rely on them to do the heavy lifting while you sit back and enjoy, and we have an aspect designed around just that. The Touch of Thunder aspect allows users to enhance one out of the four grenades you have available. The one we are aiming for is the Pulse Grenade Enhancement, which allows our grenades to create ironic traces on each burst and also get stronger the longer it lasts. This here will allow us to refill our grenade stock energy very fast through just one grenade usage and repeat as many times as we like. We then have Knockout where critically wounding a target will increase your mini damage and start health regen. For a Fragment we have Spark of Discharge where Arc Weapon Final Blows can create ironic traces. Spark of Ions where defeating a jolted target creates ion traces, Spark of Shock where your arc grenades jolt targets, and Spark of Magnitude where your pulse grenade duration is extended. For stats we have 90 resilience and 100 discipline. These are the only two stats you're going to be using for this build throughout because of the simplicity behind it. We will be using our super as well and melee but not on a high degree. I'll be using my melee more in another version of the build at a later date of course. For key mods you need to have elemental ornaments for creating wilds with grenades, high energy fire for a plus 20% damage buff while charged with light, Phantom might for a plus 25% for matching elemental weapons, taking charge for becoming charged with light, and battle for wild for a plus 2 worlds created. Everything about the setup will be focused around touch of thunder aspect and using our grenades to trigger a mass overload of iron traces back to us. The one but very simple method will allow us to get back at least 50 to 60% of grenade energy back if we keep the flow of grenade and our traces going, and that should be very simple to achieve. Such a loadout is even powerful against champions if you stun them first and then solo them to the point of using a finisher on them. You just need to be careful with how fast you use your grenades as you won't be getting a huge amount back instantly, but more in a small batch at a time. For weapons, we have many ways to go about this, but ideally you want a weapon that is arc, has demolitionist, and works well with any build you have in mind. So for example, I have the Riptide Fusion Rifle with Autoloon Holster and Chill Clip, and this was, and still is, an amazing weapon to use for any content you get yourself into. Although we don't have an anti-champ mod this season around fusions, that shouldn't be a big issue as the Fire Rage and Chill Clip, once both active, can stop the biggest threats in seconds. Everyone should at least have a primary fusion on hand with Chill Clip as it comes in clutch for certain moments. However, if you have completed the King's Wall raid and got yourself a Smite of Marem Pulse, then that's a good alternative to have as well as you can get Demolitions on it and then open up your Arc weapons for whatever you like and use. For secondary now we have the Sweet Sorrow AR with Triple Tap and Demolitionist and you'll want to either farm or craft a version of this weapon for this season. This is an amazing weapon to use in PvE with its big magazine and fantastic purple, which is capable of destroying a lot of combatants in different ways. The role you are seeing right now is the ideal role you want to aim for, as you can build up grenade energy fast via your demolitions perk, and then the triple tap perk will constantly add ammo back to your magazine for each critical hit made. I'm telling you right now, this is a beast of a weapon that's commonly stepped on, but in time it will be picked up for more art based builds and will dominate in most endgame content with such an easy combo to get. Alternatively though, the Brigand's Law is a great arc sidearm to use if you want to use your primary more. It can get a perk called Rolt Shot that after a kill and then reload, your next shot will jolt a target which can be very useful for quickly wiping out a large group of red bar combatants in one single go. 
For Heavy, we then have the Storm Chaser with Well Rounded and Firing Line, and this is another great arc weapon to use for an arc focused Heavy. We can use this alongside our primary to do some heavy critical damage against bosses we face, and then adding on high energy fire and for the might can extend that damage further. However, this can be done the same way with any arc heavy of your choice, so don't feel that you need this weapon specifically, as any weapon is suitable here, unless you do end game specifically. For stats, we have already mentioned both discipline and resilience are the two only stats we need to focus on this time round. Compared to all the other builds we do, we tend to spread our stats out so we can rely on at least 3 stats instead of the standard 1 or 2, but exceptions can be made if the whole concept of the build is just one thing and one thing only. Take our discipline as an example. This one stat alongside our subclass and mods will need to be at least 90 to 100 so we can fully utilize our materials design. The following exotic allows us to have 2 grenades instead of 1, and you could say that it might have been better to use something like Heart of Inmost Light instead, since you're going to be getting more of its usage, which is, you know, true. But this will be safe for another version to build at a later date with the following exotic, as this time round I want to use this exotic specifically, as having 2 grenades freely available is much easier to manage than Heart of Inmost Light. What you've got to understand is that the following build gets a lot of energy back via the ion traces created and demolitionists, and then adding on demo to the mix makes it even more faster when put into full practice. I want to show off the build utilizing the ion traces and showing you how fast you can get your abilities back up as if you're on par with Heart of Image Light. The additional mods helping the build are Elemental Ordnance and Battle for Well and the Bomber mod, and that's it. That's how simple the setup is, but what it offers in the long run is worth its weight in gold. So why is resilience at 90 you may ask? Well for the damage reduction involved, so we can absorb as much damage as possible when it's being launched at us. We already have a fragment providing more damage reduction as we go, but having a high resilience stat and no matter the activity is always going to be helpful. Plus it also means that if you want to use this build in end game activities or anything at 1600, then you can with no downside to it. The rest of the stats are as you see fit, but if I was you, I would have my intellect at least 40 to 50 and then add on the frontal wisdom mod so we can get at least a 90 or 200 in intellect. It would mean you lose out on the frontal might usage if you decide to swap it out, but that's more of a design choice you can take away if you wish. Left over wise, we have Arc Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching subclass and weapon type, Hands On for getting bonus super energy on mini kills, Linear Fusion Scavenger mod for more linear reserves, and Bad Amplitude, where damaging a champion with arc abilities causes the champion to be jolted. Now as we've covered the main topics of the setup, here are the mods we have, and how they will overall affect the build. For Head, we have Minor Discipline, Hands On, Arc Siphon, Elemental Ornus mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastball and High Energy Fire mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Firmation Plating, because of Damner and Font of Might mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Linear Fusion Scavenger, and Taken Charge mod. Mark with Mind Recovery, Bomber, Bad Amplitude, and Battle for Well mod. Grenades, Grenades, and more Arc Grenades. That's what you're going to be getting with the following build, and let me just say that if you haven't used the Pulse Grenade as of yet, you're sorely missing out. The following build allows you to spam grenades as long as you are able to get your Ion Traces going, and this is relatively easy as long as you find a big target to use it on. I've used just grenades to take on ultra bosses, and the amount of ionic traces and damages you can pull off with them makes them oddly overpowered in most environments. A single grenade can take out roughly half of an ultra ogre's health, and one grenade can weaken or outright kill a champion on legend tier, and this will net you a lot of energy back through one simple use. I would say that because of how powerful the grenade can get over time, and how resourceful the build is, it can potentially be used in GMs, and I can see its users being viable enough to help with ad control and even boss DPS to a degree. Its simplicity allows players who are new to the game to dive headfirst into end game content and rely solely on just a grenade to do the work, although I would recommend you don't do that just yet until you get some of the bare bones stuff out of the way with. But I do have to say that although the Warlocks are the main go to grenade buff users, Titans now feel like they take their place in this one key aspect, but only via arc. I will be doing another version of the build with Heart of Image Light next, and I will show you why that version is better to use in end game content, including GMs, Master Raids, and Master Tier content. So enjoy this build, because I know you will, and of course, stay tuned for the next one. 
So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. The link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.